Welcome to Safeguarding Training, which is for the new Ministry of Welcome in our parish churches. I'm Tina Campbell. I'm the National Safeguarding Coordinator for Bishops' Conference here in Scotland. I'm going to talk you through this training, which I hope will be helpful for you in your new role. At the start of this training, let's pray together the National Safeguarding Prayer, because it will remind us about this work that we are called to do and that we are called to do it in the service of the church but to protect the vulnerable. Lord Jesus we praise you for calling us to the service of others. We pray for a generosity of spirit to ensure the vulnerable are protected. We pray for a compassionate heart so that we will reach out to those who are wounded by abuse. We pray for courage and determination as we seek the safety of everyone in our parish communities. We dedicate ourselves to this work of service and pray that you will help us to do your will at all times and in all places. Amen. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for volunteering for this new role in the welcome ministry in your parish. It's a crucial role as we move towards hopefully into phase two and then onwards through lockdown into whatever the new normal will be. But I do want to thank you for your generosity in ensuring that members of your parish and others can come into church safely for private prayer. As you know, the legislation for phase two is different in Scotland to that of England and Wales. Phase two can only happen in Scotland when certain conditions from the World Health Organization have been met and then under the guidance of our first minister. This time of preparation is most important for the safe opening of some of our churches. This new Ministry of Welcome will ensure that those who come to church to pray can do so safely. Please ensure that you have completed the appropriate application form for this new role and that it has been approved by your parish priest. Your parish priest and parish coordinator will have copies of this form to give you. The practical aspects of your role, which clearly and obviously involve infection control, observing social distancing and so on, will have been explained to you clearly by your parish priest. If you're unsure, please contact him for information. This training will focus on the important safeguarding aspects of your new role. So it's very much a focus on safeguarding. The main duties of the Welcome Ministry are that you will be a welcoming face of the parish community, to assist people to enter the church safely, to guide people to restricted seating in the church, to assist people to exit the church safely, and to be aware that some people might wish to talk to you when they come into the church. It's also important to be aware that some people might become distressed and need support because of all the things that have been caused in their lives by this recent experience of isolation and separation. There is obviously an emotional cost of lockdown. Whilst for many people lockdown has provided important time together as a family and being able to connect online with family and friends has eased the sense of isolation. But for others it has been an intensely lonely experience to be separated from loved ones and also from the parish community. Some will have had no sense of security or certainty during this time. Returning to church for private prayer might be an emotional time. For some clearly there will be tears of joy, whilst others might become distressed. Members of the parish will have sadly died during lockdown, with no opportunity to meet together to support the bereaved and mourn as a, as a faith community. Lockdown will have increased the risk of abuse and harm to children and the vulnerable. Domestic abuse, mental health, an increased rate of suicide, an increase in various forms of addiction are all areas of concern during this time. Those who have suffered abuse in the past, in whatever context, might have had time to reflect on their lives. And some might now decide to talk about it for the first time and take that very brave step to speak about it. It's important therefore to give you some key reminders about types of abuse. If you're already in a voluntary role in your parish, 
you will have completed safeguarding training. So the next two slides are just to remind you that we have various signs and types of abuse and also whenever one form of abuse is happening, it's often alongside other forms of abuse. So physical abuse is any intentional act causing injury or trauma to someone else. Sexual abuse is any sexual encounter that occurs between a child or vulnerable adult and a perpetrator. This can include contact or no contact sex, forced sexual acts, rape, viewing of pornography, etc. Psychological abuse is any type of abuse that involves emotional mistreatment to someone else. And verbal abuse is very obviously forcefully criticizing, insulting, or denouncing another person. Neglect is the continual failure to meet the basic needs of a child or vulnerable adult. And it's important to remember about cyberbullying as well, which is bullying or harassment sent by using mobile phones, computers or other electronic devices. There will clearly have been an increase in this form of abuse during this time. And financial abuse, where money is stolen or restricted by the abuser. Please remember that the Catholic Church in Scotland has a mandatory reporting policy. This means that if anyone receives information about abuse, harm or any other form of criminal allegation, this will always be reported to the police or other statutory services. It's important to remember that it is not the responsibility of anyone within the Catholic Church who receives the information from another person to investigate or even to question if the allegation is true. That is, none of us hold that responsibility. We pass that information on to the police. Please remember too, that you will only have relatively brief contact with anyone coming in to pray in church, but it is important to be mindful that someone might share with you about any harm they have suffered, anyone known to them who has been harmed, they might talk about themselves being at risk in any way, or they might talk about someone known to them who is at risk. If this happens, this is what you have to do. And again, this is a reminder of what we already have had in place in Scotland for a very long time in relation to how we respond to allegations. We remind everybody that if you receive an allegation or a concern, you should listen, respond, record and refer. So there's, again, this is a reminder just to listen carefully and with respect. Don't ask questions, but reassure the person that talking about it is the right thing to do. Let the person know that you have to share this with your parish priest and possibly the parish safeguarding coordinator if your parish priest is not immediately available. Afterwards, make a note of what you were told and pass this on to your parish priest. The information to your parish priest has to be referred to him and in some situations the diocesan safeguarding advisor should also be informed. If the information is about any criminal activity, the diocesan safeguarding advisor will be informed immediately and he or she will then make the referral to the police. Please ensure that the person who has spoken to you is given support. It's wise if your parish could have details of local agencies and helplines available. If the person is in need of immediate medical attention, then of course this should be a priority. If you do receive information which has to be shared with your parish priest, the parish coordinator or your diocesan safeguarding advisor, please remember to find support for yourself if you're upset or you might still be worried or concerned about the person who spoke to you. It will be important to talk about this to your parish priest or someone else you can trust. Please remember we do not anticipate that everyone coming into church to pray will disclose harm or share with you a criminal allegation, but it is important to be prepared. We hope and pray that the most common response for those coming to engage in private prayer in church, their most common response will be joy at being able to enter the church and pray before the Blessed Sacrament again. 
I want to thank you for volunteering in this new Ministry of Welcome. And again, I want to stress how really important it is that you work together in your parish collaboratively to ensure that people are kept safe. Please make sure that when you are on duty, you have a contact telephone number for both your parish priest and your parish safeguarding coordinator. And finally, if you need to get in touch with me at any time, my, this is my mobile and my, um, not my mobile, that'll take you through to my mobile on that landline number and also my email address if you have any questions or concerns or if you'd like a printed copy of this training then we can have that sent out to you by post or via email or if you just have any questions that you think I could help you with in relation to this training. So finally I want to thank you again to wish you good luck in this new volunteering role in your parish and assure you of our prayers. Thank you. <laughs>